What's up guys, my name is Alan, I'm a Wix developer and in today's video I'm going to teach you guys everything you need to know about Wix SEO. How to set up your basic SEO, how to set up your advanced SEO, what the gap is between you and your competitors, and how to work directly in your Wix editor to get the best possible SEO outcome for your business, your brand, or your online store. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get started. In today's example, I have a website called Printwell. They're out in Australia and they provide packaging solutions for businesses and brands. They have a pretty cool website and in today's example, we're going to go ahead and see what we can do to optimize their website for SEO. Again, basic SEO and advanced SEO. They have a pretty alright website. It looks actually very beautiful on desktop and mobile. They even have a very beautiful drop down menu at the top left hand corner. So they have some really cool links, some pages, and again in today's video we're going to learn how to go into each one of your pages and optimize it for SEO. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get started. First you obviously need a Wix.com website, so go to Wix.com, uh, create a website and, and basically get ready to the poor... Ugh. Have your website basically displayed on your dashboard and to get started with Wix SEO, you want to go ahead and select your website. If you're like me and you have multiple websites, you most likely look, saw that screen. 99% of you will most likely actually be landing on this screen right here, which will say welcome back and then your name. So to get started with Wix SEO, you're going to obviously need to be in the Wix.com editor. So to access the editor, you'll notice that on the left hand side, you'll see home. Make sure you click on home and you'll notice on the top right hand side it says edit site. You want to click on edit site. Some of you might actually have quick actions at the bottom left hand corner here. Regardless, if you hover over quick actions, you'll notice edit site here. No matter what, we want to be inside our Wix editor. So when you first open up the editor, this is where you designed your website, this is where you built your website, you worked on mobile, etc, etc. We need to be in the Wix editor to build out our basic and advanced SEO for the very first time. Now SEO is very important and most of you will ask me what is SEO? SEO is basically providing Google who you are, what you do and where you provide your business. So let's take an example for Printwell for example. The first thing we need to get started with Wix SEO is understand that the pages and menu options on the left hand side right here. So we have the little plus button right here that says add element but scrolling down right here to add pages you'll notice every single one of your pages. It doesn't matter how many pages you actually have, but rather we're going to go into each one of these pages and adjust the SEO settings for that page. So let's start with the home page. You can go ahead and click on home, you can click on settings, and you'll be introduced to the settings tab. From here you'll notice layout, permissions, and SEO basics. Let's go ahead and click on SEO basics. Now, if at any point you'd like me to personally work on your SEO for you, would like me to give you some insights, I am available for hire on the Wix.com marketplace under Alan Bajo. You can definitely reach out to me and I'd be more than willing to help you one-on-one. -on -one. So within the Wix SEO basic settings, we have a couple options here. We need to first tell Google who you are, what you do, and the location in which you provide this service. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom and look at the very first SEO option, which is title tag. Title tags are very, very important. Some of y'all have title tags that are very, very long. Some of you have title tags that don't have your keyword. So let's take Printwell as an example, um, as a, you know, as a, as a business that we would potentially help. So we would go ahead and do the following. Printwell, from here, we would go ahead and provide their service that they provide and then we would end it off with the location. So custom pack packaging for brands and then we would end it off with the location. In this case we'll just put Toronto, Canada. So what's really interesting about Printwell is that we created an absolutely amazing title. We have the business or the brand we have the keyword, right, or the service they provide, and then we ended it off with the location. So this is important because sometimes doing keyword research for your SEO, knowing what your customers are going to type into Google is going to be so important. And the reason why we want to basically add a keyword directly in our title, so that when individuals are typing in a specific key phrase, your title catches that exact key phrase and Google will then say, oh, you must be talking about Printbell or Printwell has this specific keyword within their title, so they'll recommend you more. Now, for example, if I was Alan Bajo, hello, and I'm a developer in Toronto, Ontario, what do you think my SEO title would be? 
Well, in this case, I could consider typing in Alan Bajo. That's me, the business and the brand. Website developer and designer. And then I would end it off with my location, Toronto, Canada. So you get the premise here. Basically, the business or brand, the keyword or key phrase, and then the location that you're providing. This is basically the magic formula of kind of getting a home run title. Business name, service, keyword, and then ending it off in location. You want to generally keep it under 75 characters. So if you hover over the little I right here, you'll notice that it says it's recommended to use 55 to 65 characters to briefly describe the topic of the page. For example, power, yoga, class for beginners, Brooklyn, New York. Again, keeping it very short is important. You have the description underneath it, and this is called the meta description. So once you've created a basic SEO title for your website, you want to go ahead and create a home run meta description. The meta description is actually what appears right here when you type in a business. So you'll always notice that the business has the description, right, and the, and the title. And then they also have the description underneath this. So when we edit the tag title, which is right here, the meta title, it actually applies right here. And when we edit the description, the description actually applies right here. Now, Google obviously doesn't show all of this, so let's try to make a home run title within a few sentences. What is important and what is Google really looking for when it comes to the meta descriptions? It's important to obviously talk about what you do, but also add the keyword within the few uh, first words. So, uh, Printwell offers a variety of custom packaging, right, uh, for brands and businesses. It's really important because Google will also pick up on the meta description, all right? So creating a home run title, creating a meta description is super, super important. And that's basically gonna help you get the starting of your basic SEO. Now, let's go ahead and hop over into advanced SEO real quick on the same page and see what exactly Wix offers in regards to advanced SEO. So one of the things uh, that we're gonna be looking at introducing within our website is custom structured data. So structured data markup, you've probably heard of this before, it basically allows Google to better understand what your page is about. So the description they provide here is, add a markup to this page so search engines can display it as a rich result. Rich results are so, so important. And I'll give you an example of what a rich result is. If I type in, for example, is Alan Bajo a good Wix SEO developer? You'll notice that this right here is a rich result. Now, what if I typed in, is Alan Bajo a good SEO developer? You'll notice again that markups are everywhere on, on Wix.com, especially on Google.com. What if we typed in, is an FAQ page good for SEO? Well, you're starting to notice a trend here. Markups are being used by pretty much everybody nowadays. So you can definitely go ahead and click about this featured markup here and start looking at what Google's recommend, recommending for markups, or you can actually just follow my video right here and I'll tell you exactly how to write your perfect markup for your website. So what we wanna do, first of all, is we wanna go ahead and go back to the basic SEO settings and we wanna go ahead and copy, okay, we wanna go ahead and copy the title tag that we created for the basic SEO settings. And then we wanna go back into the advanced settings, click on structure markup data, and click on add a new markup data. From here, it's gonna say that you need to write JSON-LD structure uh, code. Uh, you need to write your markup in JSON-LD format. Now, if some of y'all don't know how to code, this is exactly what you're gonna do. You're gonna go ahead and give this markup a name, and we'll call this Google Featured Results. You can call it Google Featured Snippet, Google Markup, the name doesn't actually matter. But we wanna go, go ahead and hover over this little eye here and click on uh, this portion right here that says, need a markup, use this external tool, then paste your code here. So let's go ahead and click this little blue uh, link that says, go to markup generator. And it will, you'll be introduced to a website called technicalseo.com. And this is where we're gonna go ahead and use this website to create our markup for the first time. So we're gonna click here and we're gonna go ahead and create a markup for a website. All right, we're almost there. We're almost ready to create an advanced markup for our website. First thing we need to do is go ahead and enter the name of our website. Now this is why we basically went into the basic SEO settings, copied our actual description. From here, we need to go to our live website, printwell.au, 
and copy the URL. Once we have the www, we go back to technicalseo.com and simply enter the URL right here. Voila! The right hand side is a markup uh, for printwell.com. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply copy this little snippet right here and then we're going to go back into our advanced markup and where it says write your markup in JSON-LD format, we need to simply paste it right here. All right. So what's going to happen here? is that you're going to notice a new code widget once you press OK. What we're going to do uh, temporarily is we're actually going to go ahead and right click this, uh, click on the snippet and click test on Google. Once we do this, it's going to open up a page called google.search.com and it's going to say, does your page support rich results? What we basically want is we want a valid pass. We want to make sure that we did it right. So within a few seconds, it says congrats valid items are eligible for Google's rich results. That's amazing. Just make sure that we created a markup for the exact title that you want, which is the, the title that we create on the basic, and we make sure that we've entered the right URL. In this case, you'll notice that this website, printwell.au, now is eligible for Google's rich results. So, for example, if an individual was type in, type in custom packaging and branding, we could potentially have Google come, highlight this little portion, and basically feature us as a featured snippet. There are so many featured snippets out there all over the internet. How to fix a car, you know, for example, how to cure, you know, pretty much anything. You'll notice that there, it's, it's, it's all there. Featured snippets are super, super important and we want to make sure that our website is eligible for it and we do that by going into our editor, hovering over our home page, clicking on the home, clicking on the basic SEO, making sure we create a killer home uh, description, um, sorry, a really great title and description, go into the advanced, going under structured data and then making sure that we add a brand new markup for the first time and then just hovering over the little eye here, go to the markup, create that uh, the snippet, pasting it into the code, pressing apply, and you should notice your very own featured snippet for your homepage. Now, this is really cool. Uh, we've now started working with creating uh, structured data. Now, for some of y'all who have a local business, that means some of you who are um, designers, uh, interior designers, home renovators, moving companies, uh, local salons, any type of local business, we need to add one more additional markup. And this markup is called the local business markup and it's super, super important. What it's basically going to do is that it's going to allow the connection between your local business here to the actual website. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to allow when people type in your business name to have not only your business on the right hand side but your website on the left hand side. So we need to make sure that we have a local markup that's going to properly structure your website and make the connection between the two. So to get started with that, what I'd like us to do is to actually go back to the basic SEO settings, copy this little snippet here and we're going to exit the editor for the very first time. We're then going to go back to our Wix dashboard and what we're going to do on our Wix dashboard is at the bottom, we're going to click on settings at the bottom left hand corner. Once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and go under business information. So left hand side, let's click on settings, make sure we exit the actual editor, okay, super, super important. We're then going to go ahead and click on the business information and we're going to be introduced to the business profile. It's super important. Most business owners and most individuals who are attempting to work on Wix SEO for the first time, they totally bypass this and their structure is completely messed up and Google doesn't clearly know how to identify them and link them as an appropriate business to that listing. So what we're going to do is we're going to paste our name here. We're then going to go ahead and upload the logo. So in this case, we're just going to use Printwell's regular logo. Where are they? Here they are. And what we're going to do, so, and, and just to let you know, some logos may not actually fit. Just, just make sure that you get a small logo. And we're going to then identify the category that best describes your business. In this case, it would be online store. And we're going to copy uh, part of the description actually that we, we got from the editor uh, into the description. So this would be the basic meta description found on the homepage under 
SEO settings. If you don't know what your description was, go back into the editor, grab it, copy and paste it here, exit the editor, and just make sure that this information matches exactly what we have in the editor. I think what we're starting to learn here is that consistency is so key when it comes to Wix SEO and SEO in general. So the last thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and match the local business, which would be this right here, to the actual address right here. And what this is going to do, once we hit save, bear with me, we're now going to go ahead and do the following. Once this is filled out, we're going to go ahead and go to home again one more time at the top left. We're going to go to edit SEO settings. Um, actually, we're going to go to edit site and we're going to load up our editor one more time. So we started working on the basic and then we quickly hopped into the advanced section. It's important to start working on the advanced section within the first page we work on so that we can apply these tactics to every other page. The reason why we're back in the editor is that once we click on the page section one more time, hover our, over our main page, click on settings, basic, advanced SEO, you'll notice once we click on structured data that there's a brand new markup. That's right, the local business markup is now available. And you'll notice that if we test on Google, this markup is automatically generated by Wix once we went into our settings tab on the left hand side, we went under basic info and filled out our basic information. Wix automatically created us a Google My Business um, markup, which is really, really amazing. And again, if we test it one more time on Google, you'll notice once you click test that we also got a valid and eligible for rich results, which is really important. Markups are going to really help your business, uh, Google understand what your business is, where they're located, what you provide, what the description is, uh, and it's really important to get this all consistent. Okay, so under the structured data here, we're pretty much done. Uh, we are now going to go ahead and move into adding keywords to your website. Now, a lot of y'all might be might have worked under just to let you know. Some of y'all went potentially could have went under marketing and SEO and looked at SEO right here for the very first time. And I'm going to talk to you about this section here uh, in a brief moment. But before we do that, we need to go ahead and create some fundamentals. The fundamentals are always started within the Wix editor, in my opinion. Uh, so let's go ahead and under additional tags, you'll notice that some of you will actually have some information here. Alternate, uh, site name, type, URL, but you won't actually have the one here that says keywords. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and have all of you go ahead and click on add new tag and it says paste HTML code. So in order to get keywords added to our website, we need to add them in HTML. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on edit on my keywords and you're actually going to have to write meta, right? Name equals keywords and then this little description. But what I'm gonna do just for argument's sake is I'm gonna copy this information and paste it in the description of this video. So in this video, scroll down to the description, copy what I'm gonna paste here and paste it right here. Once you press apply, you'll notice that it will have another segment here that says keyword one, two, and three. What I'd like you to do is once you have this here, go click on edit and I want you to replace keyword one with your keyword, keyword two with your keyword, and keyword three with your keyword. If you want to add a fourth keyword, a fifth keyword, and a sixth keyword to your Wix SEO efforts, simply press comma and then keyword four, comma, keyword five, comma, keyword six. And you'll notice all your keywords will start being added here. It's important to add your keywords all within your homepage so that your homepage gets triggered. So what have we learned about setting up our Wix SEO for the very first time under basic and advanced SEO? Well, we learned that we need to work within the homepage first, and then we learned that we needed to work within the SEO settings right here. SEO structured data, which is advanced SEO, adding keywords, which is very important, giving our website a title, that's a really good home run title, giving it a meta description, and from here, the last thing we need to do is add some social features. So let's go ahead and click on social share. And you'll notice that the social sharing option automatically grabs your information here, automatically grabs your information here. 
and the only thing you need to do is upload a beautiful photo so that when individuals share your website, right, when they share your website on social media, or if they share your website on Twitter, or even share your website on a text, what, what this will do is it'll actually grab the image, the website name, the description, the URL, and show them a beautiful thumbnail when sharing your website. This is such an amazing feature because not only is it a great benefit, but it visually makes your website look absolutely outstanding. So we looked at the basic SEO settings, advanced SEO settings, Wix advanced structured data markup, Wix advanced um, keywords, and then we topped it off by going ahead and making a beautiful social share for this page. Now, what do y'all think you have to do uh, for the rest of the pages? That's right. For every single one of your pages, you're gonna have to go in, click on the page settings, click on basic SEO. The only difference about all of, on all your other pages is that all your other pages are gonna have a backslash. This is gonna be important. You don't wanna make your backslash too wordy, too lengthy. So for example, um, Printwell has different products. Or, in your case, it may be different services. Folding cards, flexible pouch, paper bag, and you get it. So in this case, I could type in folding uh, carton, and you'll notice that, voila, I now have printwell.com forward slash folding carton. It would be yourwebsite.com forward slash keyword, page, etc. So I wouldn't make it too lengthy, for example, by folding carton, you know, here. I, I really don't think that uh, approaching it this way is the best way. We remember one thing, okay? Because we've now added a rich markup to our website right here, what's gonna happen is that Google is now gonna be able to understand your content better. So to really rank high on Google search, you need to make sure that what the user is typing in on Google search, you're answering that question. Simple as that. Your website needs to talk about a wide range of products or services you provide, and it needs to be in depth. It needs to be properly, uh, you know, readable for humans, and not just spammed uh, and and keyword, um, you know, stuffed every single sentence. No, it needs to be real written content so that Google can go in and properly recommend your content to users who are looking for your business, your brand, your service in your location. Okay, so don't worry about keyword stuffing but write beautiful, compelling content for your website so that Google can properly recommend it. So let us talk about a really, really important uh, feature you can add to your Wix website that's gonna really help your website stand out in regards to SEO. We know that we typed in, is an FAQ page good for SEO? And well, when optimized for relevant keywords and well-designed in terms of UX, um, FAQ pages can be valuable for organic performance. So what we need to do is we don't want to add an FAQ page and have it basically on a different page where people are just going to land on that page. I really want people to land on my home page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an FAQ widget directly to my website. So I'm going to go ahead and do the following. I'm going to go ahead in the editor, click on search and type in FAQ. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and use this one right here that's created by Wix. It says Wix FAQ. So I'm gonna go ahead and simply add it to my uh, website. We're gonna click on add. And once we've added it, we have a little FAQ widget. It's right here. And this is going to help our website rank so much higher because it gives it valuable content about what the user's typing in. You can imagine users type in so many different questions. So whatever they're typing in, add it to the FAQ. So how do we basically manage the FAQs? Once we're in the editor, we're gonna simply click on the widget and click on manage FAQs. What we wanna do from here, guys, is you'll notice now within your Wix dashboard, you now have an FAQ widget uh, option right at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this general one. I'm gonna delete them because they're just temporary. And I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the temporary one that they have here. I'm gonna remove it. I'm gonna remove it and I'm gonna go ahead and add a brand new one right here. I'm gonna click on add new, and I'm gonna go ahead and click question and answer. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do the following. I've probably done some research about my keywords. So, for example, I could type in how to buy custom packaging in Australia, right? Uh, or in, in this case, it'd be Toronto. And then I would write a beautiful, beautiful description here. So I'm just gonna grab a random description. 
I'm gonna go back to my editor, paste it. The FAQ widget is very beautiful because you can add an Instagram post, you can add an image, you can do a ton here. But if you click on save, you'll notice once you go back to your FAQ, your FAQs are right here. Again, FAQs are so valuable for organic performance and adding an FAQ directly on your homepage is gonna boost the amount of times Google is gonna recommend your actual site. So sometimes what happens is that your website ends up becoming, well, not so beautiful because you have so much content. Having a well-designed website is super important and that's why I really recommend reaching out to a Wix professional like myself on the Wix.com marketplace. Whether you want me to help you build your website or whether you want me to help you personally work on your advanced SEO, uh, definitely consider reaching out or at least consider reaching out to a professional to help you build your user experience as a whole. So we have an FAQ, we have the basic SEO, we have the Wix advanced SEO, we have markup data, we have already done so much on the homepage already. So what I'd like you guys to do next is go under settings right here and click on accessibility wizard. Accessibility wizard is super important because we need to basically understand that we need to make our website more inclusive for site visitors uh, and make sure that anyone who's visually impaired or doesn't have a mouse or has ac accessibility issues using websites are eligible to use your website accurately. This accessibility is super important because Google takes SEO accessibility into consideration when we're talking about SEO. So let's go ahead and click on scan site and go through the accessibility wizard and get some results. Some of y'all might actually have 99 plus here. Don't be alarmed. I really recommend you connect with me or a professional in regards to this. But working with accessibility is really simple. We need to hover over uh, the kind of issues that we have here. So if we click on this, it'll say, hey, listen, this image needs a description. It needs a proper description that doesn't say .png. So what I recommend is naming it one of your keywords. So um, custom packaging Toronto, Ontario, and press set as an alt tag. And voila, we now have appropriately fixed this by instead of renaming it 123, you know, my screenshot.png, which most of you might have, we want to go ahead and uh, change all the alt images and make sure that they uh, are properly named. Or you could also name this Printwell. And it's important uh, because actually when you name these, when people actually search on Google Images, if you, whatever your keyword is, if you name it your keyword, when people are searching uh, on Google Images for those specific keywords, again, Google Images, right? Um, custom packaging, and they can use Google Images, the alt tags are gonna appear here. So every single one of these providers, these images, have an alt tag, and their alt tag is actually called custom packaging. So we need to make sure that we alt tag and make sure that all of our alt tags are properly done. Other than alt tag, you're gonna notice something called headings. So headings are basically making sure that you describe each and every single one of your headings as a main heading. So on the homepage, you may have multiple headings, but it's really important to, if you really are unsure, just follow the steps within the uh, accessibility wizard and just make sure that you accurately select this as a heading and select this as a paragraph select this as a heading, select this as a paragraph. You'll notice your dropdown will actually um, say whether it's a heading or a paragraph. In my case, uh, I've already gone through it, so there's only 14, but once you're done all of this, uh, it'll say congratulations, you've now finished your accessibility wizard. So accessibility, super, super important for SEO. Basic titling, super, super important for SEO. Um, now, let's talk about other things that could take into consideration you want to go ahead and go into uh, view site, okay? You want to grab your URL and you want to go to a website called Google PageSpeed. Once you go here, you want to go to this website here and paste your actual website and click on analyze. You see, unfortunately, website performance, how fast your website loads is going to be super crucial on mobile and super crucial on desktop. I've already created a website on my channel called how to improve your Wix website performance. It's super important uh, for you to optimize your performance. Um, what I want you to do is go watch that video after you've watched this video and get some really good insights about how to improve your performance because it's really, really goes into depth. So 
I, I'm using this example, googlepagespeed.com, because I want you guys to get your actual numbers. I want you to see what your actual performance is on the mobile and what your performance is on desktop. Super important for you guys to get these numbers. If you're in the green, if you're in the red, uh, you may want to consider reaching out to a professional to obviously help with your Wix performance because Wix performance and Wix SEO and Google SEO and search SEO, they're all related. They, they really all talk to each other. Now, we talked about performance, we talked about accessibility, we talked about basic SEO, we talked about advanced SEO, we talked about social sharing. Now, what you're probably going to want to do is you want to go into finally the SEO portion here, click on basic uh, setup right here, and Wix is going to give you some options here. They're going to let you know, hey, you need to go ahead and you know adjust and properly create a custom title. You need to go ahead and make sure that your description is inside, um, your, your keyword is inside your description. So you'll notice that step number one and step number two are going to have a ton of options for you to look at and a ton of different things to fix, such as alt tags. Now we can fix alt tags inside the accessibility wizard, but again, it's important for you to go through this. They have very, very simple steps on exactly how to fix these minor issues, but you're going to want to basically get uh, a perfect score here. So for this example, we have 25 out of 38, fix some alt tags, which we know now how to do, and then create a better title. So some of y'all might have you know, 5 out of 100 or 96 out of 100. We want to make sure that this is 100 out of 100 before we do absolutely anything, before we resubmit this project back to Google. Finally, one of the things we want to do is go ahead and click on the little pencil right here and make sure that the basic title that we have right here matches the basic, and bear with me, matches the basic title that you have right here. And once you do, I want you to go ahead and look at location. If you're an online store and want to rank all over the world, this you would go ahead and select that this business serves customers nationwide, worldwide, or interacts with visitors online, for example, a blog or an online store. But if you're a local business that provides businesses in multiple cities, Toronto, London, uh, you know, Montreal, Quebec, wherever it might be, you want to go ahead and add multiple locations right here and press save. That way, your geotag is going to better identify Google. It's going to tell Google where you want to rank on Google search, what locations. So that's why under the basic settings, we matched it. Your business, the keyword, then the location. You don't want to add multiple locations, but you do want to add all those locations in the SEO settings. Again, under SEO settings, under not step one, not step two, but right here under this little pencil and add all your locations here. Now, Wix SEO can get very in depth. You need to look at backlinks, you need to look at better content, internal spider webbing, and so much more. I definitely consider, uh, uh, I really recommend you reach, uh, reach out to, an, again, a professional who can really help you go from point A to point Z at a high level because this, I, I believe, the basic settings is definitely going to help you. Uh, I have so many case studies on my Wix profile saying, yes, this has helped, but it may not completely beat out every single one of your competitors if they have an SEO strategy in mind. This video is to help you better understand basic and advanced level SEO on the technical side of it. It doesn't give you the advanced SEO strategy for the next three months of creating blogging, SEO, uh, content writing strategy, uh, buying backlinks, but it should give you some really good understanding about how to create and set up your Wix SEO for the very first time using Wix.com. So I really hope this video gives you a lot of merit. I hope you have a lot of value with just the basic SEO and the advanced SEO. And if you have any questions, I'll definitely consider answering all of your questions in the comments uh, down below. And again, I hope you have uh, a fantastic day and hope you guys have enjoyed this video and these insights. Thanks guys. This is Alan with Wix.com and this is how to create your Wix SEO for the very first time and everything you need to know about Wix SEO starts here. Thank you so much guys.